We need to talk about how stories and histories are changing. I'm Dr. K, a political scientist who looks at how information is shared. And today, we're looking at how information is remembered. Why? Because I don't remember Ukraine signing a peace treaty in the spring of 2022 with Russia. But that's what Russian President Vladimir Putin said happened when he spoke with African leaders in St. Petersburg. Leaders and officials from Senegal, Egypt, Zambia, Uganda, the Republic of Congo, and the Comoro Islands were there, led by South African President Cyril Ramaphosa, trying to come up with a peace deal. Russia's war in Ukraine and the polarization that it's causing has put African countries, both politically and economically, in bad positions. Food prices are rising, as Ukraine is the source for about 10% of the world's wheat, with large amounts being sent to North Africa, and African states feeling like they're being forced to pick sides in this conflict. Putin told these leaders that it's not his fault negotiations aren't happening. He feels he can't trust Ukraine because Ukrainians broke their promise to become neutral. He said Ukraine had signed a peace treaty with Moscow and Turkey in the spring of 2022. And that's why Russian troops left Kyiv as a sign of goodwill. The thing about goodwill is that it makes you look good. And there's a saying, do good and talked about it. So I double checked. And then there was nothing to be found. No announced peace deal, no agreed neutrality, and the withdrawal of Russian troops from Kyiv wasn't announced either. Russian forces did pull back in what was called a defeat for the ages because they failed to achieve Putin's goal of quickly crushing Ukraine's outgunned and outnumbered army. The Russians were ill-prepared for Ukrainian resistance and they were incapable of adjusting to setbacks. They failed to effectively combine air and land operations Russia misjudged Ukraine's ability to defend its skies and messed up basic military functions like planning and executing the movement of supplies. What the Russian troops did have along was parade uniforms, according to some reports. Statements from a Ukrainian official who mentioned this at a press conference in April 2022 might be where the often disputed comment came that Putin said he could take Kyiv in three days. The Ukrainian official said the parade uniforms showed that the enemy planned to enter Kyiv in two days and then march right through. I couldn't find any report of Putin saying that he could take Kyiv in three days. Only reports from Russian sources saying that he never said it. But he did say in 2014 that he could take Kyiv in two weeks. Well, that didn't happen either when Russia invaded in 2022. Instead, a year later, Russia's Vladimir Putin is saying the withdrawal from Kyiv was a gesture of goodwill. The problem is that the crimes against the civilian population that were discovered in the liberated areas created outrage in Ukraine and internationally. Kyiv had remained at the negotiating tables until public support for a compromise with Russia all but disappeared as what happened in Bucha, Irpin, and elsewhere became clear. My colleague Max Levine's body was found with indications of torture at that time. The African delegation, which had been in Kyiv on June 16th, visited Bucha and saw firsthand what had happened there. Ukraine has been at the negotiation table with Russia since 2014. Russia denied that it was involved at all, and by 2019, the Kremlin began systematically naturalizing citizens in eastern Ukraine a violation of the spirit of the Minsk Agreement. It also laid the groundwork for Moscow's recognition of the independence and then the annexation of those territories. There's a long list of actual violations by Russia of agreements, which is why Kyiv doesn't want to negotiate with Moscow if there are no security guarantees. Right now, Putin's trying to change the narrative about what happened in the spring of 2022. It's hard to find any gestures of goodwill. Evidence of the opposite are easy to find. Missiles even flew over Kyiv as the African delegation was there.